Okay, we're going to describe transformations of radicals. I have again the same notes that were shown in previous videos where we were writing the equation for the radicals and also graphing. So if you want to take a take your notes out or if you want to just pause and take the notes if you never did, please feel free to do so now. For example, one, what you want to do is you want to go through and you want to see what represents what. So in front of your radical, you have either a positive or negative, positive or a negative sign and a number possibly. So that's represented by anything that's vertical. So outside of the radical are your Y values and Y means up and down, and another word for up and down is vertical. So every time we describe something that's happening to the plus or minus A or K, we're going to use vertical in front of it. So for our first transformation, which is one half, we have a vertical shrink, shrink because it is less than one. So that's why we're using shrink. Another word is compress, and it's by a factor of one half. So whatever number that's given in your problem, that's your factor of one half. The next, okay, so that was the first transformation. The next transformation that happens is H. So if I look at H, it tells me that's a horizontal shift. So anything that's under the radical has horizontal associated with it because it goes with X and X is left and right. Another word for left and right is horizontal. So it's a horizontal shift. And then I'm trying to figure out by what, um, how many units where, um, which direction I should say. So it's a horizontal shift, two units left. Now you're gonna say, well, why is it left when there's a positive sign there? Because remember um, for your H value, you always change the sign It's the opposite sign, unless there's, a negative in front of that X, which there isn't in this case. So it's going to go in the opposite direction. The next um, transformation is K. So K tells us, so let's go down here, whether or not there's going to be a vertical shift up or down. So based off of the sign plus, that means it's going to go up. So by what? It's a vertical shift and I just abbreviated with the V, up one unit. You have just described a transformation for this function. Now, if you were just curious and you wanted to know, well, what does that graph even look like? Well, that particular graph has a positive X and a positive Y. So that means it's gonna to go towards quadrant one if I look above at my notes, because it says that X has to be positive and so does Y. So it's going to look something like this. And remember a square root graph looks like a parabola that's on its side and it's half of it, half of that parabola. For example two, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to just go step by step. If you have your notes, just refer to, just go in order. So number two is a vertical stretch. And this time it's a stretch because it's bigger than one by a factor of two, because again, that's the number that's shown. Okay, your next transformation is that sign that represents B. So if you go back to your notes, you will notice that B tells you that you're gonna have a horizontal reflection and that reflection goes over the, X, I'm sorry, the Y axis. So you want to be specific. Okay, and now I have my H. My H tells me that it's horizontal shift. Which direction? Now this one is kind of tricky. This is what I was talking about a few minutes ago. If there is a negative sign in front of that X, you do not change the sign or what follows. You just leave it as it is. So this time there's a horizontal shift to the right, one unit. And then finally, what's going on with K? 
Since there is a negative sign, that means it's going down. And since it's outside of the radical, that means it's vertical. So there is a vertical shift down three units. Easy? All right, you're finished. So technically you have five options as far as transformations. You, have, you can have a sign here, plus or minus. You have A, you have B, you have H, and you have K. You only have five options. So we saw nothing happen here. And so therefore we only had four. And if you look below, you see I have four um, bullets there. And I just erased my, my part of my problem. Okay, let's put that back. There we go. And as I was saying, if you really wanted to see what your actual graph looks like, eh, this one this time, if you look at the signs, your X is negative and your Y is positive. So on the graph, if you go back to your notes above, quadrant two is where your X is negative and your Y is positive. So my graph is something like that. But you don't need to really know that. I mean, write that down, like if you're taking a test or anything, if it says describe, I'm just helping you to visualize what's going on. Now this time we have a cube root, but guess what? It's the same transformations. The only difference is when I'm looking at my notes now, my index has a three there. Okay, so there is a negative here. The negative goes with what's in front of A. So that tells me that I am going to have a vertical reflection. And again, be specific because now what is it reflection, reflecting over? The x-axis, okay? And now I go, I see that I have an H that is a negative, but I know that I'm gonna to have to switch that sign. And so therefore it's a horizontal shift by two units but this time it's going to the right because there's not a subtraction sign in front of the um, X. Therefore, I have to change the sign. And then finally we have K. And if I look at the sign, I see that it's going down because it's negative and it's outside of the radical, so it's vertical. So there's a vertical shift down by four units. So again, you can just verify that you did account for all of your transformations just by looking. I have one, I didn't have an A, so it's just one, it's literally one. And then I didn't have a B and H and K were accounted for. So I used that one, I used that one, and I used that one, so I should have three, and I do. So that's another way you can just double check yourself. And if you're just curious as to what the graph looks like, this time, since it's a cube root and it's negative, that means it's reflecting. So it's going to look something like this, going towards quadrant four. And how do I know? Because if I look at my signs, I have a positive X and I have a negative Y. So if I look at the notes above, the quadrant four has a positive X and a negative Y. That's how I know I'm on the right track. One more time for those people who did not take the notes. The only difference, like I said, is this time it has that um, cube root on there, but it's still the exact same concept. 